We'd like to greet all with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We'd like to greet especially you who are watching for the first time the program of Maranatha Christian Church here on YouTube. And for you who are accompanying the the services for a while but aren't, you know, a member of our churches, it's a joy to have you here with this public that's watching our services alongside us. For we know that their Lord has a blessing as for all those who are listening to his word at this moment. We also would like to advise those of the ability of our phone number, this this 0800 number, for all those who desire prayer. This number is here projected. And for all those who desire a prayer can use this number. For there will be brothers that will be there ready to pray for your life. And let's begin our service praying at this moment, pleading by the blood of the Lord Jesus. Dear Lord, we plead by the life and the power that's in the blood of the Lord Jesus, asking for a blessing and forgiveness of our sins, asking for fellowship with your Holy Spirit. Speak to our hearts, operate in our lives, in the service. This we plead in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. This moment we will be singing a song of praise to our Lord. You who are with us, sing alongside, sing with us, glorify name of the Lord through the song that will be projected with the animations of this moment. says that good is to praise our Lord with praises. And at this moment, we'll sing another song. You who are watching us can follow along, glorify the name of the Lord with us. service at this moment we will have a word of prayer of intercession by one of our pastors let's pray to the lord let's ask for a blessing for the moment that we are all going through dear lord we plead by the power that's in the blood of the lord jesus and we ask you father that you may end this pandemic upon this earth asking O lord that you can hear the cry of your people delivering your servants from this illness of any and all contamination. We also ask in favor of the great proclamation that will occur on the 14th of June that you may save 
and rescue many lives, O Lord, and that the world may know how close, how close is the coming of your Son. We pray in the name of Lord Jesus. Amen. And at this instant, we will be singing another song of praise to the name of our God. All those who are watching us at this moment can sing alongside with us, glorifying the name of the Lord, because our God uh, dwells in the midst of the praises. to invite all those who are watching us to open their Bibles in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 24 and we will be reading some verses from verse 13 onward. So Luke 24 verse 13, so says the word of the Lord. Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emos, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things that had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And we'll be continue to read, to read on verse 28 onward. And they drew near to the village where they were going and he indicated that he would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. And it, now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together. Praise be the name of our God. Let's pray at this moment, asking the Lord for a blessing through his word. Dear Lord, we once again ask for your blessing, pleading, Lord, for the help of the Holy Spirit so we may understand what the Lord wants to speak to our hearts tonight. We ask in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Brothers and friends, 
the Lord has a blessing for us. And certainly, this word that the Lord, our God, has granted for each, has for each one of us does not end in a historical narrative. We have the absolute certainty that many might know the story of the two disciples towards Emos. But the word of God isn't just a, a, a songbook of a book of, of stories. It's a mystery that projects a salvation for the life of, of, of man. And it's this mystery that he, the Holy Spirit wants to reveal. The Lord wants to speak to our hearts through his word. He wants to speak beyond the written word. Something that's beyond the written narrative. Because this word has is valid for our lives here and now. And we can resume in which is the historical aspect in the word. There was two disciples, and they were with the Lord Jesus during his ministry, which the word um, describes as Cleophas. And they were in Jerusalem. They saw the signs. They saw everything the Lord operated. And they also saw the death and the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus on the cross, the cross of the, the Calvary. And they were going back to their village of origin, which was Emos, and they were sad and, dis- and disappointed because they awaited, were waiting that other things would, would happen. They imagined that Jesus would reign upon Israel in that moment. They thought that the Roman Empire that was upon um, the people of Israel would be removed. But Jesus, he represented him, himself, he presented himself to, to them and started to explain that everything that occurred was the Father's project, which was in that it was important that Jesus would die and that he would be cru- crucified, that at the end he would resurrect, because this was the project of the Father. And those men truly liked that word, because this text tells us that when they arrived to their village, to their destiny, they constrained him, the Lord Jesus, saying, abide with us. They, they wanted the Lord Jesus to enter their home, and when he did enter at the table there, he he blessed the bread, he broke it, and then they recognized who Jesus was. And they themselves said that their hearts burned within them when they heard his words. When Jesus explained to them about the scriptures, what was the project of God, the need of death and resurrection of the Son of God. And so when the Lord breaks the bread, they recognize Jesus, and at the same time, they stood up and they went back to Jerusalem to go back to to gather with the other disciples that were gathered. And this word, brothers and friends, evidently has something very important for our hearts, because in this text, in this historical narrative, this encounter of two men with the Lord Jesus, we can identify exactly what is the encounter of man with Jesus, with a resurrected Jesus. This is the encounter of of man with this faithful faithful church. Because Jesus is alive. He responds our prayers and reveals himself each day to our hearts. This is the Jesus that we need to find, that every man needs to find. Because truly, every man lives what this what these men were 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 living they were going back to their village of origin which was emos and this return to their origin speaks of what the word of god says of the life of man the mortal of mortal man man comes from clay and will return to clay the man has a trajectory of in his life that has a beginning middle and end truly we know this we all know this through our own experiences you know Time is passing on for everyone. And we all understand that our lives are passing. And death is a a certainty that's inevitable for man. So that's why man in a certain meaning is always going back to his origin. Because he's going back to clay. He's going back to the dust. Because if he doesn't have an encounter with the Lord Jesus that is living, he will return to dust. And his life will end here in this dimension, in this, in this plane. And he will not know eternity that God has prepared for those who love him, those who believe in him. But certainly, this is not the desire of the Lord. 
And this is why Jesus manifested himself in the midst of those men. He revealed himself to them because they were returning to Emos with their hearts filled with sadness, disappointed, bitter, probably. And the Lord started to, to explain to them what in the scripture was the project of salvation, what God had for the man. Because through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus, we reach eternal life. Our sins are forgiven. We have access to a new life. And Jesus exactly was speaking of this, saying that it was necessary that the Lamb of God would die. It was it was necessary for him to die for one day for him to resurrect so that the project of the Father would be fulfilled. And brothers, in relating to our lives, it's not different. For God has a project for each one of us. And this project is exactly a, a project of death and resurrection. Death to the things of this life. Death for this world. Death for our natural inclinations. And resurrection towards God. For us to live a new life in the presence of the Lord. We cannot be allowed to be taken as that men were by their own rational expectations. They weren't awaiting that Jesus would do something in that historical moment. They awaited that uh, they were waiting for a material kingdom to be established. But that's not the project of God because God will not establish a material kingdom here on this earth. But what God has for us is, an, is a spiritual kingdom, a promise of eternal life, the certainty that the prophecies of the word of God will be fulfilled. Those men did not understand these things, and that's why they were sad. But God reached them. He revealed himself to them. He spoke to their hearts, and the word says, giving a testimony of what they themselves have felt, their hearts burned. Because the, the word brought life, brought hope to their hearts. They started to understand what the project of God was. They started to understand that God had something more for them. And when they finally reached Emos, the text tells us that they constrained him. They constrained him to stay with them. Because Jesus showed that he was going somewhere further. further. And the, every aspect of the story has a, a prophetic meaning for us. Because truly, Jesus is passing. At this moment, by, by your life, he's passing through a historical moment that you're living in. Through the circumstances you're living in. And you who are listening to us tonight, you need to constrain him. And ask him to stay and abide with you. To stay in your life. Because Jesus is passing by. The project of God is passing through man's time and it's up to man to make a decision according to accept this project of salvation or not. Jesus could have gone on his own way if they didn't constrain him to stay. Jesus could just simply pass by your life and you will not have the experience of salvation because you didn't humble yourselves, you didn't plead, you didn't ask because you didn't constrain the Lord Jesus to stay in your life. And this is... Is the blessing that the Lord has for us. We need to understand that we need to constrain Him. We need to plead to Him. We need to ask Him to stay, to abide with us, to stay in our lives. Because as the Word says, for it is towards the evening, the day is far spent. We're living a moment of darkness, spiritual darkness, where the sin has taken over the world. We're living a prophetic moment that was already predicted in that was prophetized in the word of God through sin, that would be there would be sin, there would be wars, rumors of wars, all the things that we're living in our midst, in our time. It was prophetized in the word of God. It is toward evening. The day is far spent. Lord Jesus is passing through your life, and you need to constrain him to stay with you, to abide with you, to enter your heart, so you may have an experience of salvation, so you may have the certainty of eternal life. In the moment that they did this, that they constrained him to stay with them, to abide with them, the word says that the Lord Jesus took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And instantly, they recognized him, because they had already seen the Lord Jesus during his ministry. But now, they got to know a different Jesus, a resurrected Jesus, a God that is living. Jesus disappeared at that moment. And they took a res they made a resolution to go back to Jerusalem to gather with the eleven 
apostles. They wanted to return to the church because that's what the Lord wanted for their life. They didn't want, he didn't want them to go to Emos. That's not what the Lord wants. He doesn't want us to live uh, a, a simple life here, counted in years. He doesn't want us to go back to dust. He wants us to live an eternal project of salvation. Jerusalem here symbolizes the eternal project of God because that's where the church was gathered. It's the where where many important things occur in the project of God. And those men, through having now their eyes opened, they rejoiced and went back to Jerusalem. And they gathered with the, the, the apostles and they gave testimony that the Lord Jesus had re resurrected and appeared before them. And they heard at the same moment the the testimony of the apostles confirming the experience that they had. And this is exactly what the Lord wants from us, brethren. That we go back to Jerusalem and live the projects of salvation of our God in our lives. That we may be congregated in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, awaiting the coming of the Lord Jesus. This is what the Lord wants from us. This is what the Lord wants for your life. Don't miss out on this opportunity. The same way those men were going back to their origin, disappointed, saddened. They had a change in their attitude, a change in their behavior. Their lives changed with that marvelous encounter. And they took the initiative to constrain the Lord to abide with them. They had the initiative to sit at the table with the Lord Jesus. They had the initiative to return to Jerusalem. And we may say that the Lord wants the same thing for all of those who are watching. That we may not be inert and only as bystanders of the word of, the, of God. We need to take attitude to return to Jerusalem, to give disposal, to seek and serve the Lord, to to integrate with the, with the body of Christ, the church of the Lord. Because those men who were to, gathered in Jerusalem, they saw the Lord Jesus resurrected many times. They had they were with the Lord Jesus in many opportunities. They testified everything that the Lord Jesus operated through his resurrection. And it was a great blessing. And we are inviting you who are watching us tonight to share with us, in, with us this blessing. There's a group of people who have been having marvelous experiences with the Lord Jesus. There's a group of people who have testified that the Lord Jesus is alive. Many who have listened to the voice of the Lord. And this, is, this group is called the Faithful Church. And the Lord wants you to be a part of this faithful church. So you can have the certainty of eternal life. Have peace in your heart. So you won't be disappointed anymore with the happenings, with the events of this world. Because this world will trick you. And the word of the Lord says that the last days, men will go from bad to worse, will be deceited, and love will burn out in the hearts of the people. And what we're testifying, we're testifying of these things. But the Lord has a blessing for those who fear him, those who hear the voice of the Lord Jesus. The Lord has a blessing for those who invite the Lord Jesus to be in their homes, to abide with them. Because the Lord wants to reveal and show this marvelous project of salvation. He wants you to hear the voice of the God who is alive. He wants you to have peace in your heart. He wants you to have the certainty of eternal life. He doesn't want you to be uh, scared or, or anguished with the, the happenings of, of today. He wants you to have the hope of eternal life with him. Because soon Jesus will return. And he will take with him. He will rapture a church. He will rapture and take to eternity all of those who believe in his word. All those who take this attitude to return to Jerusalem. To affix themselves in the project of the Lord to live in fellowship with the Holy Spirit until that glorious day of the return of the Lord Jesus. Praised be the name of the Lord. May the Lord bless us through this word. And we will at this moment sing another song of praise to the name of, of our God.
brothers and friends at this moment will be hearing the reading of the pastoral messages. These are messages that our pastors have written to their churches relating their the desire to be gathered again with the brothers because this is our great desire so we may be with our brothers our to be together glorifying the name of the lord we'll be hearing this pastoral messages pastoral message from pastor Nivaldo Dias da Silva from the church in Jaguaré Espírito Santo we remind the 15 brethren candidates for the baptism that was scheduled for the end of April to stay steadfast in their purpose in prayer for when possible the baptism will occur for the honor and glory of the Lord pastoral message from pastor Alexandro Ramos Machado to the brothers in the church Itabela Bahia beloved brethren of the churches Monte Pascual Monte Pescoço, Pau Brasil, Alvorada, Santo Antônio II, Cristo Redentor I and Cristo Redentor II, peace of the Lord, I miss you all dearly. Of the visits, of the evangelizations, let us pray that these days apart are shortened. Brothers and friends, our service is arriving to its end, but prior to it, we'd like to invite all those who are watching the Maranatha Christian Church, realize and 24th of November 2019, a great event, an occasion that we announced the return of the Lord Jesus, and we are reproducing and, and retransmitting this this program periodically. And in this third time, we'd like for you to participate in this third great proclamation that would occur Saturday, June 13th, and Sunday, June 14th. On Saturday, June 13th, this event will be retransmitted at 7 a.m. at Rede TV in, in Brazil and at 9 o'clock on TV Capixaba only in Espírito Santo. On Sunday the 14th, this this program will be transmitted at 10.30 in the morning on Band Brasil to all of Brazil here on YouTube. Um, it will uh, so And so the Sunday Bible School will begin at 10.30 on YouTube. And also the site on Facebook and also Hajo Manai, only the audio and also on the same day at two o'clock in the afternoon Hedge TV will also transmit and Hedge Brazil will also transmit as well and this is all Brazil time so you are invited to participate in this event that's in this word that's very important so that all can be aware that the Lord Jesus will return and we'd like for you to watch this event with us and stay with us Maranatha the Lord Jesus comes Let's pray, ending the service. Dear Lord, we'd like to glorify your name for the joy that we feel in sharing your word for all of those who are watching in this opportunity. We praise your name for we know that your word is life and we also know that many people will have an encounter with the Lord Jesus because they believe in this word. We praise you for this. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. And may the grace of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, and the sweet and eternal, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit can be upon you, beloved of, of, of the Lord, all the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Our service has come to an end. Peace of the Lord Jesus to all. Mm -hmm.